Member Darkness South. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, this bill uh, calls for employees of the province to receive training on GBA plus analysis and for policy program and legislative submissions to Treasury and Policy Board and to Executive Council to include a gender-based plus analysis. And of course, we support this bill because it's something that we've been arguing for for a long time. Um, as mentioned in the bill, gender-based analysis can be used to assess the potential impacts of policies, programs, and services on diverse groups, in particular women and people who are gender diverse. This is work we need to do. So many of our laws, institutions, and programs continue to be gender biased and either exclude or not meet the needs of more than half of the population, and I think we were just discussing that. Uh, we were also just discussing um, challenges around women in the workforce, and despite closing the gender wage gap, we know that women in Nova Scotia still are only earn 73 cents of every dollar uh, earned by men in the province. And the government has a huge role to play in that, in terms of our policies and what they enable or, or don't. Um, we know that trans and non-binary people in Canada continue to face underemployment, barriers to health care, and fear of harassment. Over the past eight years, um, we in the NDP asked the Liberal government many times to table their gender-based analysis of legislation. We asked in question period, we asked in budget estimates, we filed FOIs, um, we asked in committees, and we didn't get much back, uh, Madam Speaker. So I know that the member for uh, Cool Harbor Dartmouth wasn't there at that time. Um, and I'm glad to see this bill come forward. Um, but I will say that, you know, this is not the first time that this idea has occurred. And certainly it's something um, like childcare whose time has more than come. Um, We, you know, have lots of examples of ways, uh, programs that could have benefited from this kind of analysis. So we just talked about childcare. The fact that up until a few months ago, there was really no movement on childcare, um, particularly the uh, affordable access to childcare as well as ECE wages, that is a gendered issue, Madam Speaker. Um, we also would have been really interested to see a gender-based analysis of the elimination of school boards. Um, school boards, as we, I think, were discussing yesterday, were the only elected body with gender parity, um, and the entry point for many women, in particular, into uh, political office. Um, we've seen prenatal uh, classes canceled in Nova Scotia, inexplicably. I wonder if a gender-based analysis was done of that decision. Um, but looking forward, Madam Speaker, I think it's really imperative, and to pick up where I left off a few minutes ago, to say that you know, since 2020, since the pandemic struck, um, our caucus has continually advocated for an economic recovery task force that is made up of all parties, and of all sectors of the economy. And the reason that we have done that, um, in part, is to ensure that stimulus spending in particular, as we move out of this um, pandemic and into whatever our new economic mode is, is subject to that gender-based analysis so that we can rebuild a, a different and more equitable economy um, than the one that we have in some ways left behind. Um, and, you know, we have fared better than many uh, of our other provinces and countries around the world when it comes to the last few waves of COVID. Um, but there also, we didn't escape the disproportionate impact of this pandemic on women. Um, and we also did not escape the disproportionate impact on women of the stimulus spending to date. Uh, we in, we uh, filed an FOI uh, asking if any of the appropriations related to COVID um, that were done by the previous government were subjected to a gender-based analysis. And just as a refresher, um, most of that money was spent on building highways. And so, spoiler alert, no, it wasn't. Um, 
And, you know, we know that the government spent money to keep child care centres open. There, there's work that was done. So we're not saying that work wasn't done. It was. But, but the point of a gender-based analysis is really to, like, reveal unconscious bias. It's so that when we're doing things that, the way that we've always done them and in the way that we think they're important, um, we are all smart enough in this chamber to know that we're going to miss stuff. We're going to miss stuff. We're not going to be able to take things into account. And so that's why when we talk about an analysis or a lens, um, we are creating a system that can reveal some of those unconscious biases. And I would suggest that, you know, those biases are really alive and well in the way that the government operates. And we've come a long way, um, but we have a long way to go. Uh, in our caucus, we've brought forward a number of pieces of legislation designed directly to impact this. So paid parental leave for municipal councillors and MLAs, which we were glad to, you know, be a part of that conversation that, that led to a change both in legislation and in policy um, for this chamber and for, for municipal government. Um, we have continually advocated for set sitting hours. So far, so good this session, but we'll see. Um, uh, we've also advocated for a legislative calendar. So we have, you know, we're talking about fixed election dates. And, you know, we all really disagree on July, but we all agree on fixed election dates. And we agree with the government's rationale on fixed election dates. It gives us time to plan. Similarly, if we had a legislative calendar, like most other legislative bodies, we would also have time to plan. It would, it would make it remarkably easier in a disproportionate fashion for the women and gender diverse folks in this chamber or who aspire to be in this chamber if they knew when they were going to have to be here. We've advocated for affordable child care, care, free birth control, free menstrual products, and expanded access to trans health care in Nova Scotia. Um, it has been noted already that the throne speech that we heard uh, just a couple of weeks ago um, didn't mention women at all. Uh, I know, again, that that doesn't mean that no action will be taken or that there won't be any emphasis on equity, but, but it is something that we are alert to. It's something that we are watching and thinking about um, because we know that we can't have a healthy economy. I mean, forget the economy. We can't have a healthy society without women. But we can't have a healthy economy without women and gender diverse folks. And we know that we need a government right now. At this moment in time, we need a government that will put the needs of women and gender diverse people at the forefront, including prioritizing childcare, healthcare, and better wages for low wage workers. This is the care economy. This is what we've been talking about for some time now. Um, and, and it isn't. Um, pouring money into the same old, um, I'm not trying to pick on public works, but the same old sort of shovel-ready projects uh, and overpasses and roundabouts and highways uh, that we can pour money into. Not because it's not important, of course. We need roads. I'm sure we'll spend lots of time talking about roads. But, but, you know, the reality is, is that when the pandemic hit, what did we do? We defaulted to what we've always done to stimulate the economy. Uh, we put money into shovel-ready projects. Um, but if we had just taken a minute also and thought about, like, what else could we have done, I think we could have come up um, with some pretty great ideas. And the great news is it's not too late. So um, I would urge the government, uh, we support this bill. I would urge the government to pass this bill. Um, and we think that progressive, feminist, gender-based uh, analysis should be at the core um, of the government's work as it is in ours. Thank you very much.